The Little Western Spectre. It was the day before Halloween, and every engine and staff member was working hard. The Little Western was especially busy as tourists flocked from all over. Many were intrigued with the mysterious Maiden of the Sea ghost tour that the line offered. As the sun set further over the horizon, the Little Western engine sat simmering. Just as Donald was about to leave for a late night goods run, a blue car swerved into the yard. Out stepped the fat controller. A folder stuffed to the brim with paperwork rested under his arm. Hang on a minute, Donald. I need to talk with you all. There's been a change of plan. As Donald backed into the shed, he spoke up. What's this all about, sir? The fat controller looked at his number nine. I scheduled an overhaul for you as your ticket expires soon. He turned to face the other engines. As you all know, Donald usually pulls the maiden of the sea, but since he'll be away, I've entrusted the train to Douglas. The twins looked at each other. While Donald was neutral towards the changes, Douglas was not. Sir, with all due respect, why can't a duck or Oliver pull it? Because, the fat controller said plainly, Oliver will be out tomorrow night during the normal passenger run, and Jock will be at the docks to help with shunting as Salty is unfortunately undergoing maintenance. And with that, the fat controller walked back to his car and drove away. Douglas was seething. The next morning, he was still complaining. At last, both the Great Western engines lost patience. They looked at each other and grinned. The auto tank looked over to the Caledonian and innocently asked, Do you know why the train is called the Maiden of the Sea, Douglas? The black tender engine looked over at Oliver, confused. No, I don't. Do you want to? Douglas stared at Oliver as the tank engine began. The Maiden of the Sea was actually an old Victorian engine. She worked this stretch of line way before we were ever thought of. On a misty Halloween night, she was pulling a good straight alongside the cliff faces, when suddenly, the rocks gave way. One rock fell, then another, and soon a landslide covered the track. She rounded blind curve and smacked into the rocks and derailed. The crew jumped clear, but she didn't stop. She puffed uncontrollably, whistle shrieking all the while, straight into the sea. She was never found. It said that every Halloween, along the cliffs, a mist rolls in, and with the mist comes a shrill whistle, and with the whistle comes the Maiden of the Sea. Douglas stared in shock, but quickly regained his composure. Pa, didn't be ridiculous. Ghost spectres or whatever you want to call them aren't real. Denying her presence only invokes her more, Doug said warningly. Douglas said nothing as he left for his daily duties. That evening, Douglas puffed up to Oliver West and coupled up to Allison Marable. As he did, a thin layer of fog began to form. Suddenly, he felt nervous. His driver noticed this. You all right there, old boy? He asked. I'm fine, replied Douglas gruffly. After the driver entered the cab, the guard's whistle blew, and they set off. Douglas grew more and more terrified. Every object and shadow was scary. The further along they went, the thicker the fog became. When they reached the cliffs, Oliver passed by, blowing a friendly whistle. Douglas whistled back. Once the auto tank had disappeared, Douglas slowed to a stop to give the passengers a view of the sea as part of the tour. As he did, he heard something that made his boiler run cold. A shrill whistle echoed all around him. Filled with fear, he stopped more suddenly than he had meant to. The fear suddenly mounted as he looked into the fog. Puffing slowly towards him was a silhouette of an old Victorian engine. Douglas shuddered violently. The whistle wailed again. That had done it. It's the Maiden of the Sea! Douglas shouted. His eyes shut tightly and reversed back as quickly as he could.
Oliver had just finished shunting when Douglas raced in, brakes squealing and whistle blaring. What's going on? he asked. Douglas, still shivering, could only say one word. Maiden. After waiting a short while, Oliver shunted the coaches away, and Douglas returned to the sheds, visibly shaken. He was still shaking as he was steamed the next morning. As he waited at Haltra, he heard the shrill whistle again. The maiden! he shouted. Don't be frightened, Douglas. It's only me, called a familiar voice. Douglas frantically looked about, trying to find the source of the noise. He stopped. There, standing on the adjacent line, was Emily. Douglas looked confused. What McIntosh's name are you doing here? The fat controller brought me over here to help old Duke was away, she replied. Last night, he had a soul goods lined up for me to leave after Oliver. My lamp had broken just before we saw yours. I tried to whistle a warning to you, but instead he reversed away. Douglas was embarrassed. He just looked at his buffers. Did you really think I was the maiden of the sea? Emily asked, trying not to chuckle. I replied Douglas, a smile forming across his face. The way Oliver described it, he continued, laughing a little. Through the fog, you look just like her. The two engines couldn't help but laugh. <laughs>